as you think about, you know, all these technologies and this enormous bounty and economic and societal benefit and potential, but at the same time, if we do achieve these breakthroughs, uh, what could go wrong? <laughs> well, uh, I, I can imagine what, all the things that would go well. Yeah, so, 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 so making, making machines that are much more intelligent than you, what could possibly go wrong? Right? Right. Well, um, this, this thought hasn't escaped people over time. So Alan Turing in 1951 uh, raised the same question, and he said we would have to expect the machines to take control. And he actually referred to an earlier book, so he says, uh, in the manner described in Samuel Butler's Erewhon. Oh, that's right. Uh, which was written yeah. in 1863. Um, so fairly soon after Babbage actually developed a universal computing device, although he never built it. Um, but Babbage and, and Ada Lovelace speculated about the use of this machine for intellectual tasks. Um, so the idea was clearly there. In Erewhon, what Samuel Butler describes is a society that has made a decision that they have gone through this debate between the machinists, the pro-machinists, and the anti-machinists. Right, right. Uh, the anti-machinists are saying, look, these machines are getting more and more and more sophisticated and capable, you know, and our bondage will creep on us unawares. We will become subservient to the machines and eventually be discarded. Right. But um, if, if that was the only form of argument right, that says, look, Smarter thing, disaster, right? You might say, okay, then we better stop, but uh, we would need a lot more evidence. And also, you would lose then the, the golden age benefits, right? The, uh, all the upside would disappear. Um, so I think to, to have any impact on this story, you have to understand why do we lose control? The reason actually lies in the way we've defined AI in the first place. So our definition of AI that we have worked with since the beginning uh, is that machines are intelligent to the extent that they act in furtherance of their own objectives, right? That their actions can be expected to achieve their objectives. Objectives um, that we give them, presumably. Yeah, so, so it's, we borrowed that notion from human beings. You know, we're intelligent to the extent that our actions achieve our objectives. Um, and this is, you know, borrowed, that in turn was borrowed from philosophy and economics, the notion of rational choice, rational behavior, we just said, okay, let's just apply it to machines. And of course, we have objectives and machines don't intrinsically have objectives. So we plug in the objective uh, and then you've got an intelligent machine pursuing its objective. And that's the way we've done AI since the beginning. So it's a bad model because it's, it's only of benefit to us if we state the objective completely and correctly. And it turns out that that's not possible in general. We've actually known this for thousands of years that... Um, you can't get it right. You know, King Midas said, I want everything I touch to turn to gold. Well, he got exactly what he wanted, including his food and his drink and right, his family right. and dies in misery and starvation. You know, the, all the stories, you know, when you rub a lamp and the genie comes up, what's the third wish? Please, <laughs> right? right, right. Please undo, undo the first two time. wishes because I ruined everything. Even if the machine understands our our the full extent of our preferences, which I think is sort of impossible because we don't understand them, no. right? We don't know how we're going to feel about some future experience. In the standard model, right, once you've plugged in the objective, certainly you may find solutions that you didn't think of that end up tweaking part of the world that it right. never occurred to you. And so the, the upshot of all this is that the, the best way to lose control is to continue developing the capabilities of AI within the standard model where we give machines fixed objectives. The solution is to have a different definition of AI. In fact, we don't really want intelligent machines in the sense of machines that pursue objectives that they contain. Right. What we want are machines that are beneficial to us. Right. So it's sort of this binary relationship. It's not a unary property of the machine. It's a property of the system composed of the machine and us, that we are better off uh, in that system than without the machine.